Hi, Amy. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. How are you today? So we're going to talk to Jeff. You know the routine. Uh, you've been here before. Just don't forget this is not an exact science. Sometimes you got to stretch it outside the box a little bit. It's just the best way we can communicate. So we're going to see what Jeff has to say. Um... Okay, he's showing he's showing the youngest daughter on the floor playing. He's squatted down next to her. She's talking to him, and I think I've probably told you that before. She she knows he's there. And little kids, till they get up to be around ten, they see him, they play with him, they. They, 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 we all had an imaginary friend, even if we don't remember. And they weren't imaginary. We just thought they were. And then around 10, they kind of know society will poo-poo them, so they kind of shut it down. But right now, she's care, she's put loose and, and carefree, fancy free, whatever, <laughs> and knows that he's there. And as he's squatted down, talking to her, and she's playing with a doll or something, some toy on the floor, and jabbering away to him. She's not looking at him, but she knows he's there. She's just jabbering away. So you might want to pay attention to what she's saying, you know, just, um, or if she, like, tries to feed somebody a cookie that's looks like she's feeding it to the air, she's not. And I think I probably explained that to you before. But he also reaches up, and, and show me again. And he... Where? No, you got to be more exact. Okay. And it's like you're standing there looking at her, but of course you don't see him. And he takes his left arm, hand, and reaches up and grabs your right arm about here. So he's reaching up and he's, he's like the family unit. But he's, he's grabbing your arm. So you should feel just a little pressure. Don't know how you'll feel it. Everybody feels it different. It might feel like really a lot of warmth. It could be, feel like goosebumps right there or a bug crawling right there that you can't get off. Or sometimes they even feels like they stick me with pins and needles when I'm not paying attention. They really want my attention. So make sure when you get any of that, you validate him, acknowledge him, tell him you love him. He says everything's going to be all right. And, oh, isn't there a song? Hang on, hang on, let me see. It's like he's singing song in it. Okay. David Lee Murphy and Kenny Chesney sing a song called Everything's Going to Be All Right. And he's, and, okay. So let's pause. So. Even if he didn't listen to country music, that does not matter. It's not his type of music. It's my type of music. So he might be referring to a song. So I would get it. It's got the, it's got the words in it. So go, go to YouTube, watch that song. Pay attention to the words. That's a message to you from him. And, it's, and it talks about a sign, her looking, turning around looking at a sign on the wall. But he's showing me a sign on the wall, so I don't know if you have one like that or you've seen one like that. You could be walking through the store or you could be watching a movie and somebody could have it on their wall. Everything's going to be all right. So you're going to hear or see all of this. Everything's going to be all right. Play that song, too. There's, 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 this is going to fit in a whole bunch of different ways. So that's a very strong message that he's going to over and over and over give to you. So, make sure when you get those signs, see those signs, hear that song. Um, even if it's a different song that says basically the same thing, know that that's a sign from him, trying to reassure you that everything's going to be all right, and uh, make sure you validate him, acknowledge him, tell him you love him, and give him permission to bring you more signs. talking about bridge over troubled waters 
Now, I don't think he's talking about the song this time. And he's actually showing me a little bridge over some water. The bridge over troubled waters, but, but, the, but you had the bridge to get over it. And you're on the other side of it. He says you need to calm down. Everything's going to be all right. And, you know, I don't know what's going on in your world right now, but you know, everybody's world is going to mess up right now. But he seems to be very sure that you're already on the other side of the bridge and everything's going to be all right. And he says nothing will ever be perfect. It's not supposed to be. Because you will not learn anything if it's perfect. And you're here to learn. Mistakes are just a learning tool. So any, any mistakes or whatever that troubled water was, what did you learn from it? What did you learn not to do again? What did you learn that you need to do next time? Something that you learn from that troubled water. And there'll be more troubled water. We all have it. Um, we all have boo-boos and hiccups in our life. But we never think about, what the hell did I just learn from that? We just go, oh, that was messed up. Nah, nah. You know, we bitch about it. But what did what did we learn from it? And I don't do it either. I, I don't. But I have more lately. So take it from an old lady <laughs> who's had a lot of troubled water. <laughs> there's really some, there's, there's a silver lining to all of it. There's always something good in it, no matter how bad it is. You learn to love deeper. He, he said that. Did you learn to love deeper? Did you learn to be more cautious? Did you? Oh, then he stopped. Did you learn what's important in life? That's a big one. That, that, he made that like big. Did you learn what is actually more important in life? The house, the uh, having a new car, that shit is really not important. Now I feel like a bug's crawling up my neck. So know when you get that feeling and there's nothing there, that that's him taking his finger and kind of running it up and down your neck right there, getting your attention. It was felt like a creepy crawling thing. I always have to run. When they do that, I have to run to the bathroom and look. Is that really a bug or is that you guys? <laughs> he loves you very much and he's proud of your strength. He says, don't, don't crumble. Don't fall. Keep pushing ahead and it's almost like you, it's almost like there's like a rubber wall and you're like pushing your face into it trying to get through it and you just can't seem to get through it it's almost like your face gets imprinted in it and pushed out and then it goes back and then he's showing like somebody cuts a slit in it and you're going to be able to push it apart and walk on through so whatever's been going on and i don't think it's the virus thing know that you are going to get through it and he's showing sunshine on the other side of that they always come up with unique ways i've never seen a rubber wall you've heard him he was saying i thought he was saying your name at first but then it didn't sound like didn't sound like Amy, but I thought he was saying your name. And then he starts saying, hey, hey, hey. So you'll hear it in one ear. If you hear it in these ears, you'll hear it in one ear. And it, you may not hear hey, but he's trying to say hey. So eventually you'll, you'll understand that that's what you're hearing. It might be a buzzing. It might be a shrieking. It could be a muttering. It doesn't matter. I always say we have telepathic ears. You might hear it up here. You might be sitting there blanked out watching TV and might, you might hear up here, hey, hey, hey. But you'll throw it aside because you don't know that that's him trying to get your attention. He also comes up on your shoulder and he goes, 
happen like with one finger on your shoulder. So it could feel like a pin sticking you or it could feel like we don't have fingers when we're gone. So, you know, it could feel like energy, which sometimes is sharp, tingly. But make sure you acknowledge him and give him permission. Tell him it's okay. Tell him you want those signs. Because they have all been stressing that to me a lot lately because some of them don't know if they should step forward. And I'm sure he knows he should. He says, you, oh, he's showing me your feet, your shoes on. He says, you don't have to have new shoes to be happy. I don't know if you've recently bought new shoes or wanted new shoes and couldn't afford them. You don't have to have new shoes to be happy because the ones you have on your feet still get you to the same place. They just aren't new. I need new tennis shoes. I lost my other ones. Again, he says, so no, everything's going to be all right. You just may not be that princess in a big castle, but you're just as important where you are. That's where you're needed. He's making me rock. I'm not sure where we're rocking. He wants you to be happy and find the simple things to be happy about, which I was just in another one of my readings. Wanting people to go back to the basics, be, be happy with. Be happy with the little things that you have. He says, you know, the people that have all that money and all that stuff, most of them aren't happy. Money can't buy it. He said he did not, he did not realize that when he was here. So now he, he reaches down and he puts his hand on top uh, top of your little girl's head and he kind of tosses her hair. So you, you might see her like, like, like she's smacking his hand off of there or she's trying to smooth her hair down because he's messing it up or something. So you might watch for that. And if you, when, when you see that, validate him, acknowledge him. You've also, if you haven't felt him, you're going to, like, sitting on the side of the bed, and he's actually bouncing it, trying, which, when they do that, when I, they show me that, they're making a big effort to make the bed moves. It probably won't be that big when it happens, but you might just feel it a little bit where his butt would sink down on the bed, or you might actually feel the bed wiggle a little bit, or you might see an impression or the blanket might be moved in a spot like where smoothed out like where he sat. So he's he's trying to let you know that he's there. He's all around. He's holding his hand out to hold your hand. So he's showing me he's taking his left hand and your right hand. So hold your hand out. And they've had several people do this lately. Just hold your hand out like you're going to hold his hand and ask him to hold your hand. And then give it a couple of minutes and see if you feel that warmth, that pressure, that sometimes I've actually felt him like actually holding my hand. Usually I get just, I'll just feel like a little pressure here and it'll get warm in the palm of my hand where they put their energy. I do that all the time when I'm driving down the road. If you're here, hold my hand. And you don't have to be a medium to do that. I'm not sure what he's saying. He says, say it again. I didn't quite catch it all. Don't. Don't worry about the financials. I'm not quite catching. Don't worry about the financials. 
and it's like it's like there's a big raindrop here and there's a big raindrop here there's a big rain so there's going to be some money just trickle here and trickle there trickle down to you trickle down just a little not like a big rainstorm like we had this morning but just like a drop here and a drop there and another drop there it kind of feels like I used to always feel oh my gosh I had to spend this over here and I don't have enough and I would get just enough to cover it all of a sudden some money or something would come from somewhere it would always keep me even I never seemed to get ahead but it would always keep me even there would always be enough just enough to replace that just to keep me afloat just enough they will provide he said they will provide Is most of all, he wants to see you happy. And I will try to help. If you allow me, you have to allow him. You cannot override your free will choice. He says, do what you feel that you need to do for the next step. Not saying next step of what. So whatever the first thing that pops in your mind, that's what he's talking about. You'll know. He just he wants you to know. He's sorry, and then he loves you. I'm sorry for fucking up. I love you. Now I'm going to try to help make it right. He says sometimes when he's there, and, he, and I keep feeling, I usually don't look this way when I'm doing readings. I keep feeling like I need to look further away, and it wasn't that I needed to see something. It was, it's like you're turning your head away from him. He's there, and even though maybe you don't mean to, you don't realize you're doing it, but you're turning your head away from him. Maybe, maybe still a little pissed off at him for leaving or something. I don't, I'm not sure why, but you're, he's over here, and anyway, turn, you're turning your head. You're not turning your back to him. You're just kind of turning your head away from him. So I don't know how to. I don't know how to tell you to fix that other than be aware of it and uh, that, that might be enough to uh, make it a little different he said again that he loves you so watch for those signs Talk to him. I promise you a thousand percent he can hear you and see you. I just I can't stress that enough to everybody. They see and hear you way more than you think. And it's so easy for them to do. Okay, he's leaving and he has one single yellow daffodil. That's a two look. Daffodil in his hand. So I don't know if you recently given him daffodils or you just got some daffodils, thought about getting some daffodils, but uh, I think he said this is a specific flower. Okay, my dear, he's leaving. Much love to you. Thank you for allowing me to be his voice. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. Giving you lots of love. Stay safe out there in this crazy world.